Welcome to week seven. Thank you so much for being here. This week, we're going to talk about parsing. We're going to talk about how sentences have structures in them. They can be divided into noun phrases, verb phrases, and we will use this to help the computer understand sentences to help the computer ex extract information from sentences and to use this so that it would have a better understanding of the world. So far, we have been doing mostly natural language processing, which is uh, turning human language, be it sign language or spoken language, into language models, which contain, for example, probabilities of two words being together or the probability of two words in English being related to one word in Spanish, and so forth. From finite state machines to BERTs, we have turned information about language into a language model. A model for what? Uh, we've used it for two things. One of them is natural language generation, which is, for example, predicting a word on your cell phone once you've typed a few letters, maybe guessing the next word um, when you're typing on your phone and then predicting what's going to come next. We've also done generation where we make a new paragraph. We used n-grams for this, and then we used um, deep learning for this as well. So one of the things we've done with natural language processing is natural language generation. We've done a little bit of natural language understanding, which is trying to understand what is said in some text or some stretch of language. For example, understanding if a review is positive or negative, or understanding what a tweet is about. Is it about sports? Is it about spam? Is it about um, Arabic from Egypt, for example? In the next two weeks, we'll focus on language understanding. This week, week seven, we will uh, study how to parse a human sentence so that we can distinguish its different parts. On week eight, we will use this to then learn information from these sentences, learn relationships like a restaurant serves certain kind of food, or London is the capital of England, and so forth. And this will help, of course, bring information to our language models so that they can better understand the world and can better interact with our users. This week, we'll talk about parsing. Um, Rule-based parsing, we'll mention uh, deep learning parsing briefly. We'll talk about um, statistical parsing, uh, a kind of parsing called dependency parsing, which is figuring out which words depend on which, a kind of rough um, parsing called chunking, where we just need like big parts of a sentence. And again, we're going to do this to then perform knowledge extraction, where we try to extract information about the entities of the world and use this when we have systems like chatbots or questions and answer systems and so forth. Let's get to it. Let's um, look at this sentence. Uh, we've been looking at uh, noun phrases since week two. We have a sentence like, I like pizza. And on week two, we said that the first element was a noun phrase the second element was a verb, and the third element was a noun phrase, so that a sentence in English could be defined as noun phrase, verb phrase, noun phrase, for example. Each of these is a constituent. So you could have a noun phrase constituent, that is the word I, a noun phrase constituent, which is the word pizza, and a verb phrase constituent, which is the word like. We call them constituent because they are um, pieces of language that make sense on their own. For example, I like pizza. Constituents can have more than one word in them. Um, you, the subject of this sentence could be the professor. And then who likes the pizza? The professor. So there's one constituent, a noun phrase, which is the professor. It could also be I, it could also be Jane, and so forth. Uh, we have the same verb, and then we have another noun phrase with two words, pineapple pizza, as our object. So we can have constituents like noun phrases, and they can be composed of one word or more words. But 
they act as a noun. For example, the professor, the weird professor, the extremely weird professor. They might have a lot of words in them, but together they're acting like a noun, like the subject of the verb likes. The extremely weird professor likes pizza. So each one of those parts of the sentence is called a constituent. Uh, we're going to simplify the names. We're going to call noun phrases NP. We're going to call the verb phrases VP. What happens if you have more than one word in your constituent? If you have this, then one of them is going to be the head of the constituent. This means that it's the main idea of the constituent or what the constituent is talking about. For example, in the sentence, the weird professor likes pineapple pizza, you have three constituents, an NP, the weird professor, a VP, likes, and an NP, pineapple pizza. So in the constituent, the weird professor, what are we talking about? We're talking about a professor. We're not really talking about weird, and we're not talking about the either. So there's three words in the first constituent, but only one of them is the main idea the professor. So we have one uh, constituent, NP, the weird professor, and the head of that NP is professor, which is a noun. Uh, it, also in the noun phrase pineapple pizza, we have two words. Uh, and what are we talking about when we talk about pineapple pizza? Are we talking about a pineapple or a pizza? We're talking about a pizza. And so that's why this one is the head of the constituent. So we have a constituent, pineapple pizza, with one head, pizza, which is what we're talking about. Also notice that the head has the same category as the whole constituent. So pizza is a noun, therefore every, therefore all of the constituent is a noun phrase. Professor is a noun, therefore all of the constituent is also a noun phrase. Um, you go ahead and give it a try. These are all noun phrases. Take a moment to uh, figure out what are the heads of each of these noun phrase constituents. Pause the video, try to figure it out, and then come back. Welcome back. These are the heads of each of those NPs. When we're talking about a high-class spot, such as Mindy's, for example, we're talking about a spot. When we're talking about the reason he comes into the hot box, we're talking about a reason. When we talk about three parties from Brooklyn, we're talking about parties. Um, even if you have a single word like they, the head of that constituent is the word they, because it's what it's talking about. Um, so again, the head is the word that can stand for all of the rest of the constituent. It's what the phrase is about. And the head has the same category as uh, the noun phrase, or so it determines the category of the noun phrase. So, for example, reason is a noun, so that whole phrase is a noun phrase. Spot is a noun, so that's why the whole constituent is a noun phrase. We can have other types of noun for, uh, constituents that we'll analyze in following videos, such as verb phrases, prepositional phrases, and so forth. One reason why we know that all of these are uh, noun phrases is that they all behave the same. For example, they can all be subjects of a verb. Uh, in the phrase, they are great, for example, the word they can be replaced for any of these uh, noun phrases. For example, the Broadway coppers are great. The reason he comes into the hot box is money. Three parties from Brooklyn are arriving. So any of these NPs can be the subject of a verb. And that's how we know we're all the, they are all the same type of constituent. They're all noun phrases. So summary so far, um, we have a structure called a sentence which is made up of constituents, like noun phrases and verb phrases. And our first step is trying to identify what these constituents are. 
Maybe our language, like English, will have noun phrases. Maybe it'll have verb phrases. In the next video, we will look at um, how we can analyze the structure, the internal structure of a constituent, and then start building larger and larger elements until we can build the whole sentence.